Hey everyone, Sirkan here. Now, yeah, I know, I barely touch YouTube for a while, so I'm more of a Twitter and DeviantArt person. But, don't worry, I'm here. And good news is, well, I got me a new laptop for, uh, uh 2022 uh, uh, Christmas. Yeah, sorry, I'm not good at talking, but don't worry. So, right now, I'm reacting to, uh, uh, product, uh, hang on, products for, yeah, I can't read it, but, the point is, it's on RuneScape channel, but it's uh, reviewed by, uh, I mean, previewed by Protex himself. So if you want to check out the video, be sure to check there and uh, link below. And be sure to check out uh, Protex's uh, channel in the other link below. Alright, now let's see what we have in store for us. This is Fort Burin 3 New Foundations, RuneScape's next big update featuring a new skilling hub, item saving altar, and new construction training methods, which you're about to learn all about in under 5 minutes. Fort Burin 3 is replacing the old lumberyard northeast of Varok, but as you can see, the fort isn't much of a fort just yet. I mean, it doesn't even have walls. It's time for you to wear the royal mantle and take the fort's construction into your own hands. Well, after you've completed the mandatory mini quest, of course. Head over to Varok Palace and click on the portal to get started. Throughout the mini quest, you are introduced to the new construction materials and mechanics, with the first building you construct being the workshop. To create the workshop, you'll need 8 wooden frames and 6 stone wall segments. Wooden frames are created on the frame builder from a new type of plank called refined planks, with each frame requiring a total of 3 of these. Refined planks are created using a total of 4 regular planks on the sawmill, which is conveniently attached to the frame builder and close to your bank. Wall segments are created using 4 limestone bricks on the stone cutter, with each brick requiring a single piece of limestone to create. After having bought or made the wooden frames and stone wall segments, required, you can click on the blueprint table to start construction. When constructing any part of the fort, you will see a certain amount of hotspots. These hotspots will provide construction experience and progress to finishing the structure when clicked on. When following the yellow hotspot correctly, your perfect build percentage indicated on the buff bar will stay at 100%. If you don't do this and simply AFK, you will reduce the amount of perfect build percentage, reducing the amount of extra experience you're able to gain from the construction process. Yeah, okay. You will, however, always gain the base amount of experience indicated on the blueprint table, but by keeping your perfect build at 100%, you're able to gain 20% more total experience from the structure, which consequently also reduces the cost per experience. Okay, so you have your workshop, what's next? Well, the walls, of course. I mean, how else are you going to stop the horrors of the wilderness from coming inside? Exactly. Uh-oh. <laughs> No the fort's walls and gates are built like the workshop using hotspots, uh, although instead of it being one project, it's multiple segments. It's worth noting that you can only have a single construction process active at a time. Once the walls are completed, the fort's finally protected and you can start to construct the other main buildings. The workshop, of which you already have its first tier, will be your go-to skilling hub. As you upgrade its tier, you will gain remote access to invention machines, increased construction experience inside the fort, Ooh. and at tier 3, an increased invention machine power of 25%, oh, meaning yeah. you'll be able to have more power-hungry invention machines running at once. The town hall was perhaps the most unique building, and not just because of its looks. For every 3 minutes spent skilling inside the fort, you will gain 1-3 to three points depending on the tier of your building, but you can also gain a single point for every 15 minutes logged out of the game. Each hmm. point is the equivalent to 1% of a small fallen star and can be used to buy bonus experience in a skill of your choosing. Yep, you heard that right. You can gain bonus experience even when you're not playing the game. Oh, there cool. is, however, a cap of 5, 10, or 15 stars depending on the tier. Hey, let me pause here. I just want to say that means I can play Scarum while not playing RuneScape. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah. Here's your town hall. The chapel features a unique altar with a chance to save bones and ashes offered to it, increasing with every tier up to a maximum of 10% of items saved at tier 3. The experience of the altar also scales with the tier of the chapel up to a maximum of 350%, which is the equivalent of the chaos or gilded altar. The burners can be fed clean noted herbs of any type, and the burner time can be stacked up by every single player in the world. If you don't like the color or theme of your chapel, you can change them to your favorite gold. The command center is your new all-in-one. Yeah, hey, hang on. I want to see if you could put graphics. Hang on. Let me let me uh rewind a bit. I'm sorry, folks. Just give me a minute. Uh... If you don't.
Ah, yes, you can add graphics. Cool. Although I don't see Sarah in there. Ah, poor goddess. She's getting le yeah. <clears throat> Sorry, she's gonna be left out. Yeah. If you don't like the color or theme of your chapel, you can change them to your favorite. Go. The command center is your new all-in-one daily managing hub, allowing you to access your Anachronia base camp, player and port, miscellanea, and even your archaeology research team. Yeah. Using the command center, you will be able to get up to a 10% increased port success chance, 10 extra base camp workers, archaeology That's research lady, speed right? buffs and cost reductions, and the ability to keep your miscellanea approval rating at 100% for a week for the small cost of 79,000. And coins. If construction experience is all you're after, you can reinforce your buildings using the same amount of materials to once more gain that sweet, laid-back construction experience without having to sacrifice your fingers. You'll be able to get your hands on Fort Farinfrey soon as it's releasing on Monday the 13th of February. Yeah. And remember that this is just the start of a series of content releasing in the future. Protoxant. Okay. Alright, thanks man. Now that's tomorrow folks. Uh, this is gonna happen tomorrow. Now, now first off, um, oh, oh hang on, <laughs> don't want to get copyright. Just give me a minute. <laughs> all right, all right. Anyways, uh, first off, can I add some uh, magic trees here? Cause that would be all crazy cool. Cause they're cool, and uh. Hopefully, uh, we get to change the color of Saren or something, because, uh, that poor guy is getting left behind. I mean, like, what's it word? Left be What's the word? What did I say before? Left out? Yeah, left out. Yeah, sorry, I forgot. Even though what happened in Extinction was, yeah. If, if you know what I'm talking about, then, uh, play, uh, Extinction, and good luck. It's very hard. And second? Wait, did I always say second? I don't know. I can't remember. Um, it's like player's own house, except you can craft your house outside of, well, player's own house. Still really wish we could add some new stuff for our player's own house, like old school RuneScape. And also have that golden elf statue for our, uh, study room. So, um, that's my reaction, and if you like, be sure to like and subscribe to my channel, along with my other channels, like, uh, Webpad, and, uh, Defeating Art, and even Twitter. Yeah. Alright, I wish you a good luck tomorrow, right? And make sure you collect as many uh, limestone planks and even those uh, herbs as possible. See ya.